Welcome back. It's a big day for China's manned space program. The country is to take another crucial step towards building a space station. The China Manned Space Agency, the CMSA, has announced that the country's first cargo spacecraft, the Tianzhou-1, is scheduled for launch at 1941 Beijing time later today. Well, the spacecraft will be holstered to a Chongzheng, or Long March 7 Y2 rocket. It will lift off from the Wancheng Space Launch Center in South China's Hainan province. The Tianzhou-1 is the first cargo ship independently developed by China. It's expected to operate in orbit at 380 kilometers above the Earth before docking with the Tiangong-2 space lab. The final launch rehearsal was held on Tuesday. Well, earlier we spoke to our reporter Ryan Chua at the Wangcheng Launch Center in Henan province. He told us more on how the final preparations are going. Everything appears ready. There are just some uh, last-minute tasks to be completed. For one, fueling is ongoing. Early this morning, the rocket Long March 7, which will carry Tianzhou 1 into space, was loaded with kerosene. And now, as we speak, we understand that it's being loaded with uh, liquid oxygen. Now, these propellants are said to be more environmentally friendly than uh, the fu uh, fuels or propellants that were used in China's older Long March 7 rockets. Now, aside from that, um, air is also being blown. Um, into the so-called uh, payload fairing. That's the nose cone at the tip of the rocket that protects its payload, in this case, uh, the Tianzhou-1 cargo spacecraft against pressure upon launching. So air is being blown to protect the spacecraft from humidity and maintain uh, the temperature inside. We also have information that uh, cargo will be loaded onto uh, Tianzhou-1 around five hours before launch. Now, once all these final steps have been completed, Tianzhou-1 will be ready for launch at, at around 7.41 p.m. local time. And based on previous experience on uh, launches here at the Wunchang Space Launch Center, we can expect uh, possibly hundreds of tourists to witness the launch up close from various uh, viewing decks here. One of the potential difficulties facing the launch of the Tianzhou-1 is changeable weather conditions. The launch base is situated in China's southern island province of Hainan, which has a humid climate. As a result, the rocket may be fired in wet conditions. Let's take a closer look at how the Tianzhou-1's engineers have worked hard to waterproof its rocket carrier, the Chongcheng-7. This is Hainan where the Tianzhou-1 is set to be launched. Humid air and a changeable climate. Although the sun is shining right now, rain could arrive at any time. With changeable weather conditions likely, engineers have worked hard to address the challenge of a rainy launch by taking steps to ensure the rocket carrier is suitably waterproof. Our waterproof design is very straightforward. First of all, we built a drainage system. And secondly, we made sure the rocket was tightly sealed in order to isolate any water. The Changzheng-7 is the carrier rocket of the Tianzhou-1 spacecraft. Engineers have to protect millions of electronic components in the rocket from exposure to water. In one of the more innovative touches, designers placed a small umbrella on top of the fairing. When it rains, the umbrella prevents water from entering the fairing and going into the rocket's air conditioning vents. We also produced a type of waterproof glue, which can endure high temperatures. This is a very special technique we made just for the Changzheng 7. The waterproof functionality can be seen in many areas of the rocket carrier. With such special modifications, the Changzheng-7 is China's first rocket capable of being launched in wet conditions. Well, the Tianzhou-1 will fuel the Tiangong-2 space lab and will carry out experiments in space. But what exactly are these experiments and how will they affect our lives? Well, our reporter Ge Yunfei has the story. Apart from being the delivery man to China's space lab in orbit, China's first cargo spacecraft, Tianzhou-1, will carry out several experiments. Experiments that can affect our future. 
We want to observe the proliferation and differentiation of human bone cells that have been genetically edited and microgravity circumstances so that we can find a cure to the rarefaction of bones. China has over 120 million hepatitis B virus carriers. The disease kills over 500,000 people in the country every year. A cure has yet to be found, but the solution may lie in space. China was at the top list of the list of countries that have the most patients with liver disease. For those waiting for a liver transplant, it's very hard to find a donor. We hope to find a way to solve the rejection of transplants by stem cell research in space. You may have seen the famous Hollywood movie, The Martian, starring Matt Damon. Space immigration, as depicted in the film, may not seem too far now. China has already done some research on that, including making babies while traveling in space. Another research area is to observe the process of embryonic stem cells differentiation into germ stem cells in space. This is for the long-term goal of the space immigration. During space travel, which is measured by light years, we have to figure out a feasible way of human reproduction. Space exploration may seem remote and irrelevant to daily life, but through advances in research, experts say it could one day benefit everyone. Ge Yunfei, CGTN, Wenchang Space Launch Center. Well, a shipment of important upgrades are headed to the International Space Station as a cargo delivery flight has been launched from Florida. Once the orbital ATK arrives, the International Space Station will be capable of conducting dozens of new scientific investigations. It's been a long and fruitful journey for the space station, with CGTN's John Zarella bringing us more. All right, welcome to the International Space Station. Time flies. If it's the International Space Station you're talking about, time has pretty much flown by. It's hard to believe permanent human presence on the ISS began 17 years ago. Over the course of all those years, the ISS has outperformed just about everyone's expectations. Leroy Chow commanded the station for six months. Well, I think all of us are, are a little bit pleasantly surprised by how smoothly things are going. Not to say that there aren't some issues aboard station or haven't been, uh, but by and large, it's gone a lot better than most of us expected. That is saying a lot. ISS is huge and complex. Example, it's the size of a U.S. football field with systems to generate oxygen and water. The electrical power system is connected by eight miles of wire. But just like your home, the station was designed to be maintained. Unlike your home, when something major does break, you can't call a repairman. 49 minutes into today's spacewalk, a good view of Peggy Whitson as uh, she uh, continues to work with a uh, ratchet wrench. So the astronauts are the repairmen and women. U.S. astronauts have conducted some 145 spacewalks from station airlocks many during construction, but also to do things like change out pumps and remove and replace batteries. I felt quite a way. While you're right there, you want to try the connector? Yeah. The Russians have conducted more than 50. We've really done come a long way with EVA. It's really quite a mature uh, operation now. We, we've had our share of close calls and, and, uh, and things that didn't go right. But uh, uh, by and large, we, we know how to do it. And of course, it does come with more risk, but it's a necessary part of maintaining ISS. Maintaining also means constant resupply. About every two months, if there aren't launch delays or mishaps, the station gets a visit from an unmanned resupply ship. Thousands of pounds of food, clothing, science experiments, replacement equipment. Russian ships dock right to the station. The U.S. SpaceX and orbital ATK vehicles are snared. Astronauts get a kick out of that. We do a lot of science, like you mentioned. We've also had a lot of robotic arm operations where we've had uh, cargo vehicles arriving that we actually reach out and grab it with the robotic arm. That's been a lot of fun. The plan now is to keep the space station operational until 2024. There is uncertainty beyond that. The age of the station is one consideration, money is another. 
It costs NASA about $4 billion a year to maintain and operate the ISS. That's a lot of cash. Some experts argue that money could go to other NASA ventures, like the Mars program. John Zarella, CGTN, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Well, ever since the 1950s, the U.S. has put great emphasis on pursuing the possibility of having humans live in space. The U.S. also continues to lead the world in space exploration and space technology. Last month, President Donald Trump signed a bill to take these efforts even further. For years, the space race had two clear leaders, the Soviet Union and the United States. In 1957, the Soviets were first in space with the Sputnik satellite. And in 1969, the Americans put a man on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The U.S. has long held a leadership position in space exploration, but now the Atlantis U.S. space agency NASA computer. faces an uncertain future. Three, two, one. Since the space shuttle's final launch in 2011, the U.S. government has no means to put humans into space. NASA currently relies on Russia to ferry astronauts to the International Space Station. The U.S. space program has shifted towards private firms like Orbital ATK and SpaceX, hoping that soon these companies will create spacecraft capable of manned spaceflight. Last month, U.S. President Donald Trump signed into law increased funding for NASA. It's been a long time since a bill like this has been signed, reaffirming our national commitment to the core mission of NASA, human space exploration, space science, and technology. While NASA continues to collaborate on the International Space Station, and research projects like next year's Webb Space Telescope continue, Forward it's not clear and, uh, what the next big the mission will be for NASA and the U.S. space program. Trump has spoken of reviving the long-dreamed-of mission to Mars, but there are no concrete plans. As countries like China take on a bigger role, it's possible the United States may never again be the clear leader in space. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington.